Hello everyone. In this update, I'm going to talk about our new expansion for Runeslingers, The Awakening, Raya's Quest. I'm going to go through all of the cards that we're going to be releasing in this set and sort of discuss why each one of them was created and what their purpose for play is. I'm going to start with Raya. So Raya is a new Runeslinger and she has an ability Severing Blows. And Severing Blows states that effects you control that would deal damage to target Runeslinger cause the target to lose that much health instead. When the target loses health this way, the target is hit by that health loss effect. What this means is that a lot of attack rune spells have on-hit effects. And those on-hit effects can be very powerful. But in today's uh, version of the game, without, without Raya's ability, it's very easy to block those effects uh, so that they don't deal damage. For example, Viper Strike, which deals 4 damage. And if it hits a rune slinger, it applies 4 ailments to the target. In this case, you could pay too light, play uh, Viper Strike, and ensure that the damage is going to hit. So essentially the target is going to lose four health, be hit by Viper Strike's effect, and then you can apply those ailments as if it was a direct hit. So this is different than dealing direct damage to the target because some effects can allow you to uh, block direct damage, but if you're using Severing Blows, that's not possible. So this is gonna open up a whole new uh, way of sort of playing uh, attack and on hit effect based decks and there is uh, a lot of different things that you can do with forged strikes as well so forged strikes uh, is a new stance for the light ward rune slinger that reads the text effects on cards you control that state attack are changed to spirit and likewise text effects on cards you control that state spirit are changed to attack and what that does is corn sort of flip um, your attack rune spells into spirits and your spirits into attacks uh, for basically anything that changes or alters the damage or effects of those. So for example, Chroma Dagger, its effect will now apply to spirit rune spells. So there's a whole bunch of manipulation you can do to dramatically change uh, how certain cards interact with each other with just this two combination of cards. I think Forge Strikes is going to be really fun for, for deck builders to play with. It's going to open up a whole range of opportunities that they didn't previously have for deck building, which is what Runeslingers is all about. The next uh, card that we're going to talk about is Truth Extractor. Truth Extractor has a new keyword, Quick, that will apply to defense cards uh, in, in upcoming sets. And what it allows you to do is to use the card by turning it sideways on the turn that it is played. So uh, up until this point, all defense cards that you play cannot be used on the turn they're played for their use effects uh, unless you have an effect that specifically states they can. Truth Extractor's effect is extremely powerful when combined with a deck that's very block focused. So previously block focused decks didn't have a large arsenal of, of sort of extra effects in their toolkit and they kind of relied on blocking but if you're playing someone who has a lot of uh, utility rune spells and doesn't use any attack or spirit rune spells. Your, your blocking is not receiving the benefit that you need. And Truth Extractor really helps with this. So it basically turns your block into an attack that you can use offensively once per turn. Next, we're gonna be talking about the new boon in Case in Ice. So this is a uh, basic boon, and it states that when an ailment would be applied to you, if you have two or more block, you may choose to reduce your block by two until the end of the turn. And if you do, that ailment is not applied to you and you lose two health. So in essence, what you're doing is you're, instead of having the ailment applied to you, you're just saying, I would rather lose two health. This is, again, much more um, beneficial in terms of taking advantage of it if you're playing a deck that has a lot of block. So if you have eight block, conceivably, you can negate the effect of up to four ailments per turn and then lose eight health instead. So it's an extremely effective mitigation against ailments. Shimmer is a light ward utility rune spell that costs zero, and it has Shout. And it states that target enemy runeslayer must pay one light. If this cost is not paid, destroy target card, discard this card. And the really good thing about Shimmer is that you can use it either as a shout, uh, you know, in response to another card being played, or you can use it during your turn. So let's say, for example, your opponent is all tapped out. They don't, they don't have the ability to create any light th that you know of. Uh, and you are on your turn and you want to destroy maybe a trinket or a chant or even a concentration that your opponent controls. You can very easily do that with Shimmer because you know by you know by playing it for zero, they can't pay that cost. 
So you have those two opportunities to use it as a shout, or you can use it um, during your turn when they're all tapped out. Next, we have Lightning Reflex. Lightning Reflex is a light word utility rune spell. It costs one light and it states that you draw a card for every five points of block you have. When you discard this card to block, place this card under target rune slinger. While this card is under your rune slinger, you have minus one block and minus one maximum health. Lightning Reflex really has two very different uses. You can either play it for its effect and draw up to you know three or even four cards if you have 20 block, which, which in playtesting has been done. Um, or you can discard it to block, and let's say you're playing Wretched Cloak, you, you deal a little bit of damage uh, to, the, to the owner of that card that you're blocking, and also you get this effect, so you can place this under target enemy Rune Slinger. And as long as they have that card under their Rune Slinger, they have minus one block and minus one maximum health. Let's say you're playing an attack-focused deck with a lot of cards like Glancing Arrow, Viper Strike, that deal four damage, and are almost a go-to uh, for blocking. Same thing with Flaming Fists. So these cards, they apply ailments, they're very powerful, but they deal low damage and they're very easy to block. If you play even one Lightning Reflex, you'll take their block from four to three and open that window where even if they were to block, they're still taking at least one point of damage from that hit, and that will you know, pierce through to their, to their health and, and apply the ailments or the on-hit effects. So Lightning Reflex has a ton of utility and I think it's gonna see a lot of play especially uh, in combination with block focus decks. Reap and Sow is a Light Ward Spirit Rune spell. It costs five light and has Choice, Pierce, and Shout. And it has two effects. The first effect is that it deals 12 damage to any target and it deals plus eight damage for each armor trinket you control. So if you're playing an armor focused deck, let's say you have two in play, uh, it's gonna be dealing 28 damage with Pierce and Shout, which is very significant. Uh, the second effect states that it destroys target card and you draw a card, and you can repeat that effect for each armor trinket you control. So basically it gives you this utility of whether you want to use it offensively or defensively if you're playing um, a trinket, defensive trinket focused deck. And Reap and Sow can be paired very well with Wretched Cloak, for example, because now you're, you know, it goes from 12 to 18 damage, uh, or you can destroy uh, two cards and, and draw a card. So there's a ton of utility by even having just one armor trinket in play, it can, it can be very overwhelming. So this is, this is sort of in line with that block focus deck, but doesn't necessarily require you to focus on a block oriented strategy to benefit from it. Next we have Liquify, which is a basic utility rune spell. It costs one light and it has the keyword ale now, Ale is a new keyword that we're introducing, which means that in order to play this card as a cost, you must apply one ailment to your Rune Slinger. And because this is a cost, you must be able to apply an ailment to your Rune Slinger. So for example, if you have four boons concealing you know, all four ailment areas on, of your field, that means ailments cannot be applied to you, which means you could not play Liquify. Liquify states the target Rune Slinger loses eight health. Now this is a very interesting card because it is not, does not benefit from damage like traditional cards that deal damage. However, let's say, you know, a Rune Slinger is at two or three health. This is the perfect card to play to sort of pierce through that damage and it's not an attack or spirit rune spell. So this cannot be blocked, for example, unless you have the ability to block health loss if you're playing near. Uh, but in most cases, this is going to, to go through and be very effective. So. A little bit of a different card. We haven't we haven't seen uh, health loss on on a utility rune spell in the basic class before. So we're going to start trying more more things like this, like health direct health loss uh, effects that are not necessarily tied to ailments. Fumble is a basic utility rune spell that costs one light. It has shout and has the effect target rune slinger has zero maximum block. Draw a card. Now when you have zero maximum of something that that number cannot go up for the duration of the turn uh, that, that that maximum is set to zero. So for example, if I have you know four blocks, my block is set to zero and I would gain six block, I can't gain block because my maximum is zero for that turn. So Fumble has an incredible ability to sort of shut down block decks at shout speed. So let's look at an example of a Runeslinger that, that may have maybe 20 or 15 block 
because they, they played various cards and sort of pumped up their block for a big swing with Truth Extractor. Uh, when they play Lightning Reflex to draw four, three or four cards, you can fumble, uh, prevent that from happening, basically lock down their turn and draw a card. So we did feel that fumble was a very essential part of the expansion because if we're adding all this extra power to support block oriented decks, which really did need uh, a little bit of a buff, this is something to help counteract that that also has a lot of utility on its own. So even if your opponent is not playing a block oriented deck, if you really do need to get through with Flaming Fists, for example, to apply those two burn ailments, you'll want to ensure that you can do that and you get to draw a card. So Fumble, um, really great, really great in that instance. Lastly, uh, we have Refined Shield Mastery, which is a Light Ward stance, and this is the updated version of Shield Mastery. The previous version of Shield Mastery did not have the correct text printed on it. And unfortunately, it allowed you to play your boons on your opponent and have those boons um, you know, essentially be destroyed automatically, which is not what we wanted. Uh, and that effect would really severely limit the design space moving forward because we do plan on incorporating a number of you know, powerful boons into the next set incursion um, that will make it much easier to play boon-oriented decks. Refined Shield Mastery states is that when you sling a root spell with block in its text, you gain plus two block. And you could play boons on your empty ailment areas. Boons you play on your empty ailment areas are not automatically destroyed. So as a great example, if you have Divine Barrier, you can play Divine Barrier. And even if you don't have any ailments, you can set that boon in one of your ailment areas and benefit from its, its plus two block bonus. So in addition to all nine cards that are in uh, Raya's War Pack, there are also two copies of each ailment, and each of these feature the new black border as well as the new um, Rise Quest promotional icon and the set list for War Pack 1. One of the things we fixed with the ailment pack is Weaken. So Weaken, unfortunately, in the, in the alpha set was misprinted. Uh, its second effect read the same as Debilitates, which was that you cannot use um, defense cards that you control and you cannot shout. And that unfortunately is not the correct text for Weaken. Weaken should read, your trinkets have no effect. Weaken two. 500 copies of Raya's Quest were printed. Uh, so that means that in Raya's Quest alone, there are 1000 copies of each ailment card as well. We also have ailment packs available. There's 500 of those, which each have three copies of each ailment with the correct text on them. So I encourage you to check these out, pick up these cards. They're going to allow you to do a lot of new things with deck building that you weren't previously able to do. Really gonna help building around block oriented decks which are a ton of fun to play. This was just the sort of extra spice that those decks needed to really come into uh, a tier one competitive format, which we're really looking forward to seeing.